my finger slipped, the blade break engaged, and it dropped, and I was like, what happened? Welcome back. I'm not sure how much you can tell, but the workshop space is a bit of a mess right now. Since I set this workshop up a couple months ago, there's been lots of little things I've noticed that I wanna improve upon or reorganize and projects that have just been sitting on the back burner. Also, since I built this workshop, I've gotten quite a few new tools that I'd like to get set up and situated in my space. Kyle and I broke down and bought ourselves a compact table saw, and we also got a double bevel compound sliding miter saw. Try saying that 10 times fast. My priority is to unpack some of these new tools and build a stand for the table saw, in addition to getting some of those small things I want to improve around the shop done over the next week. Okay, I'm gonna finish this espresso and then we'll get to work. So clearly there's plenty of tasks to be done around the shop, but before I jump into anything else, I decided a bit of tidying up was in order. I have so many of these giant blocks of glued up plywood from the coffee table that I just finished. I want to do something with them, I'm just not really sure yet, but if you have any ideas, let me know what you think I could make out of a bunch of chunks roughly this size. Some context for anyone new. My workshop is set up in my apartment's one and a half car size garage. We moved to this place about five months ago and got really lucky finding an apartment that had such a good size garage space. Since my family is aware of my newish interest in woodworking, pretty much all of the Christmas gifts I received this past holiday were tools, which I had zero complaints about. My uncle got me these awesome wooden clamps. Tip for any of you who don't know what to get your woodworking friend or family member, clamps are the answer. Any and all sizes and kinds. We can really never have enough clamps. But one of the most exciting things I received was from my parents, and it was a beautiful set of Japanese chisels. I really haven't worked with hand tools all that much yet, but I want to dive into using them more. I had my very first experience using these types of chisels a month ago, and was instantly hooked. So I'm excited to have my very own complete set. I also got some water stones and a granite surface plate for sharpening them. I plan to spend some quality time soon learning how to properly sharpen these chisels, so they cut wood like butter. As I mentioned in the beginning, we recently bought ourselves a compact saw stop table saw, and we were lucky enough to receive a miter saw from Kyle's dad for Christmas. Honestly, I was stunned he got us such a nice power tool, but of course, very thankful. What can I say? My priority is to build a stand for our table saw, and although Kyle has been helpful serving as my outfit solution, I need to come up with one that will work for the long term. When you're working in a garage and space is precious, it's always night to create systems that are multi-purpose. I decided for the table saw I wanted to have a stand on caster wheels that could latch onto my workbench so that the workbench could serve as an outfit table for the saw. 
I like to draw everything out so I can be certain that what I am planning will actually work and that all my measurements are correct before I start cutting. I guess you could say this is my version of measure twice, cut once. And I'm also just a very visual person, like even my, even my cut list, I have to like sketch it all out. You know, I always found it a bit weird that two by fours were called two by fours since, you know, they're actually not. They measure 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. I guess that has something to do with the milling process. I looked it up the other day and they just take off more now. Anyways, it's kind of funny that we kept the name 2x4 since it's not factually accurate, but... Now, you might be asking yourself right now, Elena, why aren't you using your brand new miter saw to make these cuts? My reason is I hadn't had time to properly set it up and go through the manual to make sure I understood how to safely operate the tool. I like to spend plenty of time understanding the safety and operating procedure around a tool before I use it for the first time, but I wanted to get going on making this stand, so I opted just to use my circular saw for these cuts. As you can see, my scrap wood pile is getting a bit out of control. I'm going to have to build a little cart sometime soon, so maybe that'll be a future video. Uh, honestly, today got away from me, so I am going to construct this little stand uh, after work tomorrow. Also real quick, I try to be good about taking off my rings when working in the shop and I always take them off when I'm using the table saw or a larger power tool, but I realized when editing this together I forgot to take them off quite a few times when using the drill and the impact driver throughout. In general, it's a good idea to not wear your rings when you're using tools. Once the base of the stand was constructed, I placed the table saw on it and checked its height against the workbench. So it fits on here pretty well, and I just measured to make sure that we're on the right track as far as how high up it'll sit compared to the workbench. Right now, once I put on the five inch tall wheels, there will be a pretty significant drop from the table saw to the outfeed table slash workbench because you really want your outfeed table and your table saw to either be perfectly level or there to be a slight drop. You definitely don't want the table saw to sit below because then your pieces as you're pushing them through will just get caught on the lip of your outfeed table. So 
I have to wait until the wheels arrive for this. I just ordered them. So once they arrive, I'll put them on and then we'll see exactly how that, and then we'll see exactly how this is sitting with the workbench and I can buy the appropriate wood that will make that drop perfect. I had plans to go on a little gravel riding weekend with some girlfriends, so I was away from the shop for a few days. While I was gone, Kyle had decided to use the weekend to build a cabinet for his office he had been wanting to make. She's filming. <laughs> Wanna talk about your table saw incident? Are you comfortable sharing? He was making his last cut for the project when he triggered the saw stop blade with his middle finger on his left hand. When it happened, I was still away, but luckily the cartridge slammed into the blade as it was designed to, and Kyle only lost about two millimeters of fingernail. The cut didn't even draw blood. Um, I was cutting, uh, I don't know what this was, five eighths of an inch of a small piece for a cabinet that I'm working on. I was frustrated uh, that I had gone through and done all of the cutting and I was ready to assemble mm -hmm. and I was rushing because I wanted to get back to the assembly and I wasn't careful. I triggered the cartridge, I saved my finger, um, and I have to take it off. Yeah. So. But I will say, like, it makes me really happy we ended up getting the saw stop because you probably would have lost at least like the top of the half of your finger. Had an open a saw stop. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, who knows, right? It's hard to say like what the injury would have been like. But... And in that moment, it was so quick. Like, my finger slipped. I don't know how far it was going to go. You like how much momentum you were carrying? How much momentum I had. I just know it, it slipped and then the blade break engaged and it dropped. And I was like, what happened? It's gone. It's down. It's below the surface. So... I must have touched it. Hearing Kyle's recounting of the events, he wasn't using a push stick, which he definitely should have been using. Plus he was cutting a thin long piece off of another thin long piece, which means he was a lot closer to the blade than was safe and had less control over the cut. A push stick would have kept his fingers well away from the blade. I think this goes up on the wall now, right? <laughs> I guess so. To remind us to not <laughs> around. How much that trophy cost? <laughs> $100? Yeah, let's put your name on it. We'll hang it on the wall. As a reminder to be safe. Of Kyle's shame. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not of your shame. A reminder to be safe, to keep all your fingers, and to live a long and prosperous life. Despite the fact that we were both joking around towards the end, we were both really shaken up by the incident. Really happy that that wasn't worse, that we invested in the saw stop and Kyle gets to keep his fingers. Yeah, I didn't uh, have to give him the whole lecture because he definitely knew that he was doing a bit of a risky cut and that he shouldn't have been doing it. So we luckily are just having to pay for it by buying a new cartridge and a new blade, which again is infinitely better than um, a trip to the emergency room. I appreciate Kyle being okay with me sharing this on the sometimes very critical internet because I believe sharing such stories helps others, especially beginners, truly understand the dangers of tools like table saws and how quickly things can go wrong. Also, I am now an extra big fan of the safety features SawStop provides. These table saws might cost quite a bit more, but for me, it was 100% worth the money. After that, I was feeling like doing something a bit more chill in the shop. So I decided it would be a good time to work on sealing off the top of the magnet tarp separator I had made previously. Some of you will remember I put this large tarp up with magnets for easy sealing to prevent sawdust from getting over some of Kyle's stuff in this little side room. I had always meant to seal off the top attic area, but I hadn't gotten around to it. I used 3M white duct tape to connect it to the large tarp. I also went around and used the white 3M tape to secure the magnets better as the super glue I had used hadn't done the best job.
The caster wheels finally arrived for the table saw, so I went ahead and attached them to the table saw stand using the provided hardware. It works. Once I got it set up right up against the workbench, the drop from the surface of the table saw to the top of the workbench was 5 eighths of an inch. So I figured I would get a half inch thick piece of plywood or MDF for the top, and the drop would be reduced to just 1 eighth of an inch, which was perfect. I still need to decide if I'll go the plywood route or MDF with a finish. If you currently have MDF as the topper for your workbench, let me know how you're liking it. Next, I screwed down a piece of scrap plywood I had on the bottom braces of the stand to make a nice little shelf to keep my push sticks and table saw accessories. Also, I cut and glued some long pieces of scrap to the plywood top to create little ledges on the side and front of the saw base to help prevent it from shifting when in use. The grips on the legs do a good job of stopping it from moving, but this is just as a precautionary thing. I also might throw on a ratchet strap over the saw base to help better secure it. Next up was attaching the latches. I got these off Amazon and they were perfect for what I needed. I attached one on each side using another piece of scrap to offset the slight width difference between the bench and the stand. The last thing I wanted to do was replace the rubber on the bandsaw as the ancient rubber currently on it was all cracked. So it's the right diameter, but um, silly me when I ordered it, forgot to check the width, so. Oh well. So I guess we're not gonna put the rubber on the bandsaw today, but I'll order the right size and Least I can do is clean this baby up and maybe put another layer of paste wax on the top. Also, unfortunately, it looks like I'm missing the pin that goes here. I got this bandsaw secondhand for free, so I don't, I must have not just noticed when I picked it up and I haven't actually used it yet. So I'll have to try to hunt down that part, I guess, if I can't find it in the shop.
There was still plenty I wanted and needed to get done around my shop. A better scrap wood storage solution, a setup for the miter saw, you get what I mean. But I felt pretty good about what I'd accomplished over the past week. I hope you enjoyed this little shop update video, and if you want to see more shop vlog style videos, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.